Good morning and welcome back to Ecocentric. I think I've decided on a good way for me to give you weekly updates on what's happened around here. So, for today, I'm going to record a complete garden tour and I'll split it up into however many videos it needs to be to get the videos below 20 minutes each. This grapevine, as well as the one up there, is 20 years old. It is now flowering. Not all of the flowers are open. The flowers on grapevines are really inconspicuous. It produces a lot of grapes every year. It never gets ripe, but this year I will be making uh, quite a bit of verjuice, I think. This is the herb, what was a herb garden at one point, as you might know. So I'm mowing the grass around here and I find things. This is a mint of some sort, and I'm thinking spearmint. I'm not sure. On the other end, there's this one. This is a regular mint. I am going to take up the mints and put them in half barrel planters. Here's the original line of uh, chives. And this is actually where the uh, chives up in my uh, current herb garden came from. They had flowered earlier. I think I have a picture and I'll put that up. The flowers are fading now. This plant here, it puts on a beautiful flush of flowers. It's an oregano. Now, in my herb garden, and the ones I've put out so far among the food forest, is Greek oregano. This is Italian oregano. It doesn't grow the same. It spreads slowly by short rhizomes. So you plant a bit, and it will, the clump will get larger and larger every year. It grows two feet tall. The flowers though, this can also spread by seed, and that's how that got there. Sometimes I find this growing in other areas of the garden because it's spread by seed. Flowers are easier to see on this grapevine, and you see the little uh, anthers sticking off there on that one. Oh, and this one has a lot more. right here so the flowers are all open and uh, I see bees around there down below the grapevine in right here this plant you see the tops are where the flowers were that's self heal that's a relative of the mint as well and I have to get a planter out to put some of that in. This plant here, this is an ornamental plant. It's a really beautiful flower. And I let it grow up every year. When it flowers, you'll get to see. I don't know if I'll leave it there and just keep pulling the grass away from it. Or will I put that move that somewhere as well. I think I'm going to leave it there. And this is one of the wildflower patches that I leave because this is, well, one of the flowers that I like, right? And they have a big flush of flowers here coming soon. That is what I found in the whole herb garden. 
here's our white roses and our Liatris, I believe that na name of that is. I didn't stake the uh, tomatoes because there's an experiment going on. I think I said that in an earlier video. Check out this flower. Now this is brandy wine. If that produces a flower, of course it's multiple flowers together, it's going to be a huge tomato and uh, very cat-faced as uh, they call it. Now these tomato plants, that's a video in itself I'm going to make. The onions, now you can see how well the, all the onions among here. I have all the other weeds taken up and uh, they're growing really beautifully. I can't remember how many I put there. And this is on the east side. I had to put these stakes in and tie the cabbage seed plant up to it because they were all falling out over here and I couldn't mow the lawn. Sometimes I uh, see things in the garden and I want to show you but I'm not actually doing a garden tour at the time or whatever and this is a prime example. This came out this year and it was covered in blooms. It's really beautiful. So I got some pictures. I'll just stick it up here. Um, but now their blooms are all faded, of course. The snowball bush is coming back. It does have its insects eating it here and there, but not too badly. So that's not something to worry about. We'll see how that goes now over the summer because this is the first year that it came back really good. Coming along nicely, eh? So the male flowers are starting to open on the vegetable marrow. This plant is very small and you say, well, it's awful small to be having uh, male flowers. But no, the same thing happened last year. They grow in a uh, similar to a zucchini, the plant does, and it doesn't really get that large. So I will be having vegetable marrow. The uh, peas, I don't think there's a full pea yet. These are just a sugar snap piece, so we let the pods get full size. They're all flowering along, and if I walk along here, you see um, there's no flower open on that one yet, but there are buds. And the other six plants all have male flowers open on them for the vegetable marrow. So here's the color of a uh, California poppy flower. It's not open yet. It opens right out flat. But all along here, we can go and you can see the flowers coming up. In the center portion, Once again, there are flowers there. So pretty soon I'll be able to harvest some California poppy flowers. The rose is flowering beautifully. And I have something very interesting to show you here. Now, did I show you this in a previous video? I don't know. But I'm gonna show you again, this one is actually starting to get a bulb down here. So these are onions that I planted. It's just your white Spanish onions that you'll buy if you uh, bought those sets in the store. And it went up and flowered. And then I spread the seeds over here last year. So I'm gonna watch these. There are several. Well, this is the most promising one and 
uh, let it grow up then next year if it comes back and goes to seed then I will start to develop a seed because can you imagine if you had a seed that you could put in in the fall or even when the ground thaws out in the spring direct sow it and get a good size onion from it it will be excellent so that is what's going to be going on here by the front fence all of the perennial onions are doing fine along the front fence now this is one of the returning Spanish onions and it's going to flower now so it's the same variety as those little seedlings I just showed you wood sorrel is doing beautifully that should come into a nice ground cover here in not too long a time because it was just a little patch here last year and now it's spread out to here so I should be able to get this covered in a nice green mat of wood sorrel with the other plants poking up through it the tomatoes along the front fence they're doing fine and you see it's producing tomatoes I am currently recording temperatures on the east um, cold frame by the south wall but I think I'm going to take that thermometer and put it here and see what the temperatures are along this side compared to other areas in the garden then along the third area of the front fence as you know I've got the two grapevines and pretty much that's all that's here right now there are some chamomile growing from reseeding these are looking like sturdy little uh, tomato vines eh I mean they're not looking like great tomato vines for those people down in the warm climates but for a wind whipped tomato that I put out here in Newfoundland it's pretty good and uh, they are flowering now so they come up with some tomatoes so I'm going to see how much that holds up now uh, I have three of them there and whether or not I should uh, want to keep them tied up to the fence or Will they actually hold themselves up when they get tomatoes on them? <laughs> I got my doubts. I'll say they'll fall over. St. John's wort is beginning to flower, and that's nice. I've been waiting for a tea from them. The uh, lovage down here is not growing as fast, but it's uh, looking healthy. I'm happy here. These are coming right along. Not too much damage on the leaves from insects. Now being C. maxima you wouldn't expect them to be flowering yet. Uh, in another week, maybe two, I'd expect to get the first male flowers and then it would probably be a week, week and a half after that last of uh, July when I'll get the female flowers on here and I have two just growing beautifully and that one over there is kind of on target it'll produce okay so we're still near the front fence and you remember the Chinese goji uh, goji chinensis that was crack almost dead showing very little signs of life and you, I just got this little bit of green on the bottom here see this now we'll go over to the next one it's leaved out on both of the upper stems growing a little bit but not much 
so it's just sitting there it's alive but I wouldn't say it's doing well there's Romeo cherry the smoke bush it's starting to come into now what you would see but the flowers aren't fully open so this is not the full display yet That's Juliet Cherry, Common Pear, I went with the uh, weed line trimmer yesterday and I cut down a taller grass so you can kind of, you can see where the outflow now from the uh, well goes. and the bridge that goes over to what's going to be a greenhouse again at some point. One of my dock plants that I'm trying to get to grow is growing right here. This is a uh, seed stock from last year. It's not doing that well, but I haven't gotten through this area to work on it yet. So once I get here, I might, he might take off. The maple tree I haven't uh, done any uh, maple syrup harvesting, but one year I did try it, and I have the uh, spiles or spills or whatever they call them, but I tried here, see, and I put a hole in, and when I took the spigot out, spigot I think it is, I plugged the hole, and I put wax over it, but then next year the bark had split down there, it split up here. And I'm like, well, I don't know about this. So there's one, and then on the other trunk, you see the long split in the bark? I put two in this trunk. Long split, and then in this trunk. So I left it now, it's pretty much healed over. This one here is not quite. So maybe next year I can try again uh, with one spigot in each trunk. But uh, if you uh, know about whether or not that's normal or is there something I can do to avoid that, Leave it in the comments. Now this is the thing you get when you let a wild metal just grow. See these are bachelor buttons and they come in various colors but normally some shade of pink. There's yellow ones around here someplace. And then those taller pink flowers that's fireweed so you can't see much now but it's growing the greenery that's growing along there's all fireweed in the background and then some of the other wildflowers so this flushes out into a real big display of flowers here now come during the summer bachelor buttons her can be kind of invasive though see all this lighter green that's all bachelor buttons if I let this grow up it would turn into a field of those. Uh, I'll move in close. See the flowers like this, these here, and these here. This whole area would be covered in those. Now, we did mention uh, the Goji Chinensis. This is the firecracker goji. These two branches here are the old branches and this is where that piece broke off. This, from this point here, all the way up to here, that's what grew so far this year. He's starting to do wonderful here. We'll cut this here now. In the next video, we'll go across the dam and 
up to the apple tree and beyond. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you're enjoying it. And I shall see you in the next video.